what's going on y'all so another video of what it is this kind of been a slow news week but i'm gonna make do what we got <clears throat> and you know i hope everything been good with y'all or whatever like i said um if you don't remember i am doing the empire scandal how to get away murder reviews or whatever and all of that will be in one big video up on thursday nights right after how to get away with murder after i finish reviewing and doing all that so there's no need to ask are you gonna be are you gonna review this are you gonna review that are you gonna do that so yes i am i'm just not doing individual reviews for each of those i never have you know so and this is for those who are you know new to the channel that's how we're gonna do this so you know hey y'all but um let's get into this video because i really don't want it to be too long y'all know a bitch can get on here and talk but first off you know we're gonna start with some sad stuff you know Rest in peace to the author, um, Jackie Collins. Okay, she passed away from breast cancer, 77 years old, I believe. She lost her fight with it. And she's one, she's, it, it, it's just, it just, <laughs> it's just so funny because I always see her books when I'm at, because y'all know I work at the library and I see her books a lot. And so I know her and I've seen some of her work that she done with TV and all that stuff. And she always be everywhere. And this just came out the blue. Like, I didn't even know she was sick, so... You just never know. Rest in peace to her. Condolences to the family and everything. Um, Kim Zosiak. Child had a, a mini stroke this morning. Today is Tuesday. She had a mini stroke. And I was like, mm. And it just, you know, she was like the whole left side of her. Um, After she did Dancing with the Stars or whatever, she came home. And she was like, you know, <sighs> uh, she felt like the left side of her um whole left side of her body went numb. And then... She couldn't barely speak. Like, her speech was fucked up. And if y'all don't understand and know what strokes do, stroke can leave you paralyzed and your speech either speech impaired and stuff like that. And it's not, it's, it's nothing to take lightly. None of these health problems is anything to take lightly. And then strokes, you can have many strokes and don't even know it. Sometimes you can have some strokes and don't even know it. My grandfather, before he had his um stroke that actually put him in the hospital, and, you know, made, brought attention to what was going on and, uh, get his life back on track, like health wise, he had had several other mini strokes and didn't even know it, did not even know it. And it's a good thing that even though he had this big stroke that he had, it was, you know, it was enough to knock him out, put him in a hospital, but he still got the uh, movement of his body and, you know, he got to, to, his limbs still work, his speech is still there and he can still work and, you know, function, but some people that shit leaves them immobilized and it's just a scary thing. So we just, and it just sneaks up on you sometimes. So, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Um, so this past Sunday, I believe it was the Emmy Awards and we all celebrating and happy because, you know, Regina King, she won an Emmy and for her uh, work on American Crime and uh oh excuse me uzo aka crazy eyes from um Nef uh um orange is the new black one in any and also viola davis she made history in the fact that she was the first african-american woman in all of these years of the emmys to win for best lead actress in a drama okay that's the big thing, you know, and it just irks me so much when I was looking at, like, I go in the shade room especially, and, you know, seeing these comments and, and, and all these other people, they're just like, so, y'all need to stop celebrating the fact that these white people were waiting for these white people to hand us awards and all this stuff, and I'm like, damn, I hate when people say stuff like that. Can we just enjoy the moment that this proud black woman, these black women, these people that we actually know are actually winning awards, that is a win for us regardless of who giving it to us. Because obviously they didn't respect us enough to give it to us all these other years before. And we have to wait till 2015 to fucking get this award. Okay? Where's the black Emmys? I mean, the NAACP, of course, black people gonna get that. We know people of color gonna get that. But hey, let, let, people, let people enjoy their moment. And that's what I can't stand. And I just love... I love the love and support that was being put out there by people like Kerry Washington and, 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 and all of them, and especially Taraji P. Henson. Because every time one of them was nominated, 
And then and, and even just for being nominated, they was just clapping. They were supporting. When Regina won, um, Taraji got up on that stage because she presented Taraji with the um presented Regina to, with the award or whatever, and she won, and she was just clapping her ass off. And then when she, Regina got up there, it kind of like died down a little bit because they was waiting for her to give her a speech. And Taraji was like, yes! And I was like, you better do that. That's that That's that black friend that we need. That's that one friend that's just going to um shake the party up. Like, turn this bitch up. What the fuck y'all sitting there? Clap for this motherfucker. Give her her dues and shit. You know, we clap for your ass. Clap for her. Be happy. Cheer up, you know? And I said, go ahead, Taraji. I was here for that moment. And then Viola Davis, when she won, Taraji gets up and give her a hug and all that stuff. And, you know, that unity, that love and all that shit, you just felt it. And you can just see that it was genuine. That everybody really supported everybody, you know, amongst these black actresses or whatever. And Viola gets up there and she gives her speech. And it's just so fucking sad that we can see this unity going on, you know, right here in, in, in Hollywood and, and in the acting field. But then we get to, like, music. We get to music and we see it's always these women, regardless of the color they being put together, pit, pitted together. Or it's always drama against um, between them for no fucking reason. Petty shit. It ain't even no real reason what you getting drama for. Okay? It's no real support. It's like like somebody said... Crabs in a motherfucking barrel. Crabs and it's always y'all trying to we put down each other and all that shit. That's all we see most time in the um music industry. You know, and it's really it's really sad. And I just want, you know, to get an award show. Let the BT Awards come up or not even the BT Award. Let some like the Grammys or whatever come up or something big. I don't know. Just any award show come up and we see all of us just sub celebrating each other regardless of who wins. You know, being happy for each other sincerely and just like like this was genuinely. And, you know, Viola gets up there and recites something from Harriet Tubman, basically talking about some, you know, I see the greens and I see, you know, the white women reaching out their hand to me and I just can't get it. You know, and you kind of heard the audience go silent a little bit when she put that out there. And then she was like, you know, the only thing about... um. That's basically blocking people. It's opportunity. You can't have a role, especially when it comes to race and actresses, especially black actresses and actors or whatever. You can't get a role or win a war for something where there's no opportunity. And that's the only hindrance and stuff like that. I thought the speech was beautiful. I thought the speech was short to the point and had a message to it. Okay. It was impactful. A lot of us thought that we was all here for it. You know, we was finna cry with Viola too, okay? And all of a sudden, she wasn't even, the, the shit didn't even last for a good, we couldn't even wallow in it for a good five, ten minutes before this bitch get on Twitter. Nancy Lee Grant, okay? Never heard of her. I don't watch General Hospital. I don't watch soap operas like that. Once past she got turned off, I said, bitch, fuck you, okay? And then the half and the half knots came on and I said, okay. But see, I don't watch um real soap operas like that, you know. And she comes on Twitter basically saying, you know, I wish I would. I really wanted to love Viola's speech, but maybe she should have had Shonda Rhimes write it. Okay, I'm an advocate for women, women rights, and I've been this way for forty years. And you know, it's not about race. It's about all women being belittled and getting roles and stuff and opportunities and stuff like that. Not just black women and all this stuff. And I said. Once again, we have this dumb bitch coming in. Somebody dumb as fuck coming in, taking the shine. It just irked me so much. I'm just like, I didn't even comment on it. I didn't even comment on it because then she was like into the trolls in my mentions and all this stuff. And then she just, she was adamant about it because she kept on coming and she kept on tweeting and tweeting and tweeting. And I understand it's your opinion and you can say this and you can say that, but let that opinion be correct. That opinion was stupid as fuck. You ain't even get the, you, 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 give an opinion on something that you know about. Obviously, you don't know, or you didn't want to know, all right? And you just talking about all women. That's like when, like, everybody keeps saying, it's like when we say Black Lives Matter, and somebody come in and say All Lives Matter. That's like when we're doing this benefit for breast cancer, and somebody come in and say, oh, what about colon cancer? No, this is what it's about, okay? Yeah, cancer's bad, but we're doing it about this breast cancer right now, okay? That's what we're going to focus on. Then we're going to focus on the next one, all right? But it was just irking me. And she was just, 
adamant about it. Okay, she was going back and forth. People trying to tell her that's not what the point is. And basically, and at one point, she said, you know, Viola, she got her opportunity. She ain't had no, she ain't faced no discrimination or some shit to that matter. As if Viola was up there lying or some stuff. And I said, I know this bitch done really lost her damn mind. That's really when Twitter, black Twitter went up on that ass, okay? And I was just like, I was just like, girl, shut up. Like, really, just shut your face because you're doing way too much. And then it took for Black Twitter to get in their ass and for Patricia Arquette, mm. Patricia Arquette, who won an Oscar for uh, our best, best actress in the last Oscar, you know, awards. And she got up there talking about underprivileged women and you know how we're basically like second class citizens and you know we trying to get equal pay and all this stuff she got up there making her speech and then you know she got up here and told nancy hey don't do this please stop it because let her have her moment you're taking away from her and her moment and her shine i was like it took this white woman to tell another white woman to stop for this white woman to stop it wasn't because Twitter was getting on that ass. It was I, I seen the tweet and she said, you know what, you're right, I apologize. And I said, what the fuck? I know I wasn't the only one who peeped that. I, I was not the only one who peeped that. And then it just irked me so bad. It, she said this, you know, award shows is not um, the place where you put out your racial uh, issues or whatever. I said, The war show has been a history of people coming up there, putting on blast, whatever it is that, you know, inequality. Uh, I remember when Marlon Brando had the, uh, he won, he he wasn't going to accept the Oscar if he won. He didn't even show up. He had a, a member of the Native American tribe. I think it was Cherokee Nation. One of those come up there and, and talk about the mistreatment of Native Americans and all that stuff. And it was just, you know, it's always a political thing when you come to the award show. So what the fuck is she talking about? That just pissed me off. Now she got suspended. She suspended for my shit. You know, it was just, it was just, it was just, uh, I just, I just didn't like it. And I'm just, I'm glad people were not silent about it. And I'm mad it just took, a, it just felt like it took this white woman to tell this other girl to shut the fuck up. And she stopped. I ain't going to issue an apology. Girl, talking about some, I got to look at my own privilege. I let my privilege get a, get beside me and all this stuff. Nah, bitch, you missed exactly what you said. Going to post the lead. I hate when bitches do that. You know what? Fuck all that. And then you got this bitch, Sean Penn. Sean Penn, you a great actor and all that stuff. But come on now. You finna sue Lee Daniels for $10 million talking about some defamation of character. All because Lee Daniels basically said, you know, he was trying to defend, not necessarily defend, but, you know, compare, he was comparing what Terrence Howard did. To, um, I guess it was some uh, allegations of abuse to women, to, you know, his ex who was uh, suing him or whatever. The crazy girl said that she whooped, he, he whooped her ass and all that stuff. And, um, he was like, you know, Terrence ain't no different from Marlon Brando, ain't no different from Sean Penn or whatever. Basically listing name of white actors who didn't get into this much heat because and did the same thing. And even admitted to doing the same thing, but yet they still going on being successful and all this stuff. And people forget about their past and all that shit. They don't really care. And I see the double standard. I see what he's talking about. And so Sean Penn gets up in his feelings and I'm like, but Sean, you admitted that you was whooping bitches asses. You had a scandalous past, okay? So where's the defamation? I mean, I understand you feel like he was using it as a way to, you know, try to defend and condone what um, Terrence was doing, if that is true. But I don't see the defamation. But, you know, everybody been coming for Lee Daniels and Empire and all this stuff. So I guess, you know, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Like, Sean, you ain't finna get no $10 million. You ain't finna get no $10 million, boo. All right? <laughs> you can let that go. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Usher got married to Grace. Y'all remember Grace? They've been dating since two thousand nine, and they finally got married. I think over the um over the I don't know when they got married. They're saying that they had a honeymoon in Cuba and all that stuff. I mean, congratulations, 
And Grace is cool, I guess. I don't know much about her. I just know she kept under the radar, so I can't form an opinion to dislike or like her like that. But, you know, she ain't did shit to me. You do what you got to do. Now, I know some people going to be like, oh, so people cool with the fact that he married this girl, Grace, but not, and, 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 and when he was with Tamika, he did all this, and everybody was calling her this. What, is it because, and I know somebody going to say something about skin color and all that stuff. No, bitch. Tamika was a bitch. Tamika was a bitch, okay? She did too fucking much, all right? She just did too fucking much, and I just really wasn't here for her. And then that hoe blocked me on Twitter. First of all, I ain't never say nothing about her. I don't, I wasn't even following her. So, you know, fuck her. Um, You know, it is what it is. But congratulations on that. Neo got engaged to his little baby mama. Well, soon to be baby mama. <sighs> y'all these days, y'all engaged after you get the bride knocked up. But okay. Rick Ross engaged to his boo. And I just don't understand. I don't care about it. I really don't. But every time I come onto the shade room or whatever on my Instagram, it's a post or whatever. And the women in the comments be going in about the girl. And I'm like, why y'all hate this girl so much? Okay, she probably was a stripper. She did this. She did that. But damn, everybody got a past. So you gonna let your past dictate your future and your present and what you are now? Like people can't change. People can't change for the better. You mad because she came up on somebody who got money or whatever to take care of her. And she ain't got to strip and do all that other shit in her life. You know, she and you got to go out here and work at 9 to 5 just to stay alive. How come? I'm confused. Y'all tell me what the issue is with um um his baby, uh, his fiance, Rick Ross. And I hear he finna get charged and um, he being named in the lawsuit talking about um one of his friends or whatever rape. Some girl sexually assaulted some girl at his house or whatever, and then Rock, uh, Rick knew about it. Some some shit like that. It's it's always some crazy shit with Rick Ross. You know, if y'all heard about that? Let me know how you feel and what that's about. Um, <laughs> moving on from that, Azealia Banks. <sighs> Azealia Banks irks me for the life. You know, she got me blocked on Twitter, too, so who gives a fuck? I wasn't following that hoe either. Never featured her either and still won't. I mean, after this, it seems like every time, every fucking time we hear about her, it's about something negative. And I hate that. I really do. Because... Before I even was able to listen to her music or even go and feel like to go, let me go sample this music and see what it's about. Before I was able to do that, the first time I ever heard about her was going in somebody. She was going in on somebody on Twitter. And then again, something else popped up. And it's, when I when I hear something negative about a person before I even listen to their music or peep out their project, it will make me not want to even give you a chance. Okay, I can see if I was already if I already listened to your music and realized that, hey, you do got talent. And from what I hear and from what I'm pretty sure, the girl got talent. But she let this drama, and this drama that's be so unnecessary. She's one of those people that, you know, she needs to have a team tweeting for her ass. I know she's very outspoken and most of the stuff that she's saying, it'll make you think. But she just, when, he's, when you get more known for the beast and the stupid shit that you do, and your conduct and your behavior and it's overshadowing your talent. It's just it's just something is wrong with you. It's not other people. And of course, you got her fans that's gonna take her side regardless. You got her fans that's gonna take her side regardless. Some bitch tried to argue with me in my in my comments, you know, about the shit. And I was just like, girl, get the fuck. Okay. I just don't have time for stupidity. Um it's just that I hate when people applaud the bad behavior or no the ignorance of certain people and don't call them out, you know, um, I'm one of those people that I can like you, but if you do something fucked up, I will call your ass out and, and be like, bitch, you need to fucking stop. Main point. I love me some Chris Brown, but I'll call that bitch out in a minute. Motherfucker, you fucking the fuck up. Get your shit together. Okay. I do that with fucking everybody. That don't mean I ain't supporting them, but you know, I'm not a dick rider. Okay. Everything that your, um, Fave do, it's not fucking right. Okay? Everything that they put out, it don't fucking sound good. So quit fucking lying to these fucking um artists and and, 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 and actors and stuff. Y'all girl. And then it's like y'all be supporting that shit. I just can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not fake like that. So I can't sit here and be like, Well, 
She talented. And um, the reason why she do that is because people be fucking with her. No, no, no. This bitch just be going the fuck off for what? You on a plane. And because you wanted to get out first or whatever the fuck it was that was the issue. I read it. I read it. She got into it with a passenger. Okay? You get you didn't want to wait. You wanted to hurry up and bombard past or whatever. You got into it with this passenger. You want to say that the man hit you or whatever. And witnesses saying that the man didn't even touch you. You the one that punched the man, ripped his shirt almost or whatever. Then the flight attendant come out there trying to tell you to calm the fuck down to the point and you just causing a scene or whatever. And okay, you trying to get your bag. They won't let you get your bag. I mean, that was kind of fucked up. But for you to go out there and just say, you faggot. But you have a large following that's in the LGBT community. And I'm pretty sure that I've heard that you, you know, you go both both ways. And it's not saying that, you know, some people take the word faggot and take the word dyke or whatever. And like, if you're in the community, some people was cool with that word. Like, okay, I'm a dyke, right? You know, or, or, okay, I'm a faggot or whatever. It is what it is. They take it and talk about it as if it's like the word nigga and bitch the way, you know, try to take the negativity out of it. And they, they, you know... Amongst each other. Some people cool with it. Some people okay with it. But don't call me no dyke and don't call me no motherfucking faggot. Especially if I don't fucking know you. Especially if you're not gay. And even if you're gay, you don't know me. And then it's a um, it's a way that people use it. It's a t- Everything is used with tone and context. Her tone was so fucking negative and derogatory. You knew she meant that shit. You knew she wasn't meaning it as no good thing. Okay? She was using that shit to fucking offend and insult. Alright? And if you cool with that, girl, get the fuck. Like, this why you will never be great. Azealia Bank is her own fucking downfall, and I don't care no more. Move on. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Um, hmm. Basketball Wives LA got renewed for a fifth season. Why? 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 I just don't understand why. I mean, uh, this season's not even that good. And I'm most likely, don't even ask me, because most likely, and she probably won't even, I'm going to have to retire that one too. I'm going to have to retire that one just like I retired Bad Girls Club. Because some, I retired Bad Girls Club because I just got tired of reviewing it. I got tired of the mess that comes along with it. I just got tired of it, you know, and it's the same old thing. But, but, Tuesday, depending on how I feel and how this episode go, I might give y'all a special video for Bad Girls Club because this the Bad Girls Club episode that I kind of wanted to see because I, I, I think I might have to go in on a few people in that house for the way that they fucked up them girls shit. Okay, they're they bitches. They bitches and stuff, but you do not take my shit. And I mean, I ain't never seen nobody fuck up anybody's shit like that. They took all their shit, put it in the tub with a whole bunch of shit. I'm sitting here like, where they do that shit at? <laughs> I would have all because they left them for the club. Bitch, let me look at this episode and all this shit happens at the very beginning. Girl, girl. Okay, y'all just might get that one, that one special video. But um, hold on one second. Hello? Hello? Me and Alicia. Uh uh-uh. uh. What? Uh, uh. Girl, fuck out of here. But, um, my bad, y'all. That was my mama. Excellent, stupid question. Why parents be calling me be asking dumbass questions today? Let me make sure my phone hung up before I'm up here talking shit and she's still at the house. Um, listening on the line. That happened to me one time. My grandma was on the phone with my, um, my grandma was on the phone with my uh, sister. And I don't cuss around my grandma. You know, she's a whole witness. We don't, we don't do that shit. And I was saying something. I was like, I don't give a fuck about what this and all this stuff. And my grandma, maybe was like, grandma's still on the phone. And she said, you better watch your motherfucking mouth. And I said, oh, oh, okay. Okay, so, you know, it is what it is. But what was I going off about? Yeah, I just might do that one video. One. And that's a might. Okay. Am I? G-H-T. There you go. But, um, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Um, what else was I saying? Hmm. Hmm. What the fuck was I talking about? 
I was talking about Bad Girl Club, and I was like, yeah, basketball wise. Basketball wise, on the other hand, it's just getting ridiculous, and the stuff just seem, it's just pointless. So, nine out of ten, I probably won't be doing that basketball wise, LA, because I really don't. I'm not even liking this season, and it's just very draining. When it gets to the point where I dread having to do a review, and I'm the type of person that don't, if once I start something, I have to go ahead and finish it. I don't like stopping in mid-season. And if you don't see a review on something, I'm not reviewing it. That that really, if you don't see it, if a season for something start and you don't see a review for that first episode within that first, within that, the, 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 the night right after every um air or the next day, I'm not doing it. And I don't ever start something in the middle and start or, or a few episodes in and then start reviewing stuff. No, I don't do that. I have to start from the beginning. And if you don't see it, I'm just not going to do it, you know. And that's just how it works. That's just how it works. You know, sometimes it just it's just been a lot sometimes. And it's so it is so much that come on TV this week, you know, premiere week. And so far so good, okay? Y'all put down in the comments what shows y'all watching, okay? Um, of course I did I'm watching Empire Skin doing how to get away with murder tonight. Um, those two tonight. Grey's Anatomy coming back too. I wanna see how this season go. Um also I did catch Blind Spot, the new show on NBC. It was really good. Really good. Drop that bitch off in the middle of Times Square naked in a goddamn duffel bag. I said, ain't that some shit? Talk about treating a bitch like trash. <laughs> in the middle of Times Square, bucket naked. I said, all right, okay, you know, whatever. Do what you got to do. Um. After that, what other show did I... I watched The Muppets. I love The Muppets. I love The Shade. Miss Piggy, I'm watching for the shade. And let me get into the Muppets right quick. It's this group called One Million Moms. And it's a Christian group, you should have known. Okay? And I mean, when we say Christian, because a lot of us are Christian, you know. But it's one of those uh, super, super Christians and stuff like that and shit, you know. And basically, they trying to put out a position to boycott the um, Muppets because it's not the same Muppets from when we was like in the 1970s. It's not the kid-friendly. It's so much more about adults and it's so much more sex and drug influence and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. Basically, the Muppets are keeping up with the time, okay? It is keeping up with the times. If it wanted to be kid-friendly and all that stuff, it will be on ABC Family, all right? It will be on... Um, PBS, okay, right behind Arthur and all this stuff, okay, it's cute for what it is, all right, if you don't want your kids watching it, don't let them watch it, don't let, it ain't even that serious, I just don't understand that shit, if you don't want to watch something, don't watch it, you don't want something on air, don't watch it, okay, it won't affect you if you don't watch it, turn the fucking channel, all right, let it the fuck go, all right, I just, uh, I'm gonna be sitting there watching because I'm here, for the shade that's going to happen. And Miss Piggy was being shady throughout the whole episode. All right? And I'm just here for it. You know? Carmen and Denise. I want to see how that play out. You know? And it's so sad that we're talking about this shit like it's so fucking real. But it's so fucking funny to me. Uh, it was this new show called Life with Life in Pieces that came on after the month. That shit was funny. That sh No, it came on after the Big Bang Theory. And the Big Bang Theory is back. I'm so mad about um Sheldon and Amy. Oh, you know. And um, the Big Bang, uh, not the Big Bang, Life with Pe Life in Pieces. That's a good show. Y'all should check that out. Comes on Monday, uh, right after the Big Bang Theory, um, on CBS, I think. And what other shows have I watched? I'm looking forward to Blacklist to come back. Heroes Return Reborn that comes back on tonight, but you know it comes on when Scan doing How to Get Away Murder and all that stuff, and Grey's Anatomy is on. So I'm watching. I'm watching Grey's Anatomy and all that shit first. I'll catch that on my DVR. I heard Screen Queen was so funny. I have to watch it. It's so much stuff that's coming on at the same damn time. I can't record it. So thank God for Hulu. So as soon as I finish recording this, I'm going to go watch Screen Queen. Because just the previews of it, I was dying laughing just from the previews. And especially Nisi Nash crazy ass. But um, Twitter was blowing up, and I was just seeing a lot of funny tweets from it, so I cannot wait to watch it. I was going to watch it yesterday, but I got caught up in some shit, you know. I checked out Rosewood last night, right before Empire. It comes on right before Empire on the same channel. And I'm going to give it another chance next week, 
but it's the show with more chestnut and he's this um is it paleo uh what what what, what the, do the, the doctor to do the autopsy you know i don't want to use the wrong terminology um and basically it feels like somebody said it's like house and a generic house and bones put together yeah it is a little bit a little bit and it kind of slow it was a slow episode like it was the acting really wasn't all that great and it was just slow it was just slow the storyline is interesting though his character is interesting the fact that you know when he was younger he had bad he was he had sh different strokes or whatever or heart attacks or whatever by the time he was 12 or some shit like that and then he got a couple of holes in his heart and he only got a few more years to live and he just trying to do his job and you know shit like that that was interesting that's what made me want to turn in tune in but i just hope it gets better because you know it's a black show a show being led by people of color you got hispanics um and um African American like I just I just want to see it doing good you know I just wish it would get better um what movies what shows have y'all been watching I can't wait for American Horror Story to come on Hotel which will be on in a couple weeks I believe um damn what else is coming on it is Bitch, it's so fucking much. Y'all put down in the comments what y'all looking forward to, which shows y'all done seen already that y'all like. Um, and Minority Report. Minority Report is Q2. It comes on on Mondays at 8 o'clock. But um, it was Q2. That's the show with uh, Megan Fox. Not Megan Fox. Megan Good. Okay? And I like that. I actually do like it. I really do. And I want Megan to win. Because every time Megan get a goddamn show, it don't never go past the first season or the first few episodes of the season. It'd be irking me because sometimes it'd be good, you know, and I actually like Minority Report. But, um, moving on from that, y'all, yeah, y'all just put down in the comments which ones y'all looking at and, um, which ones y'all looking forward to and which ones catching your attention and which ones you don't be like, girl, please. Okay, tell me because I might have to check out some that y'all look at too. Um, did I do that? I did that. It was a story about this and it just happened. Sad story. This um grandmother, she works at Walmart in Ohio. And she went to Walmart to do her shift, come back out, come to find out that the eighth month though, I think it was her grandchild, was found in the backseat of the car, dead. And it's not her fault. It's not her fault, but I'm confused a little bit. Unless, because it was a guy, whoever had the car before her, he was dropping off four kids at the daycare, and he only took in three. He forgot about the eight-month-old. Now, my thing is, was the eight-month-old back there asleep? Okay, because, you know, babies, just, they just be, ah, if they not, ah, you know, if they not crying or whatever, they back there making some noises or whatever the fuck. Well, some of them are naturally quiet, but maybe the baby was sleeping, didn't know, and he just... That's what I'm going to assume that the baby was <laughs> the baby was tired as fuck, you know, to the point that when he dropped the kids off, he forgot about the eight month old in the backseat. And then which is confusing to me because where are you putting the car seat at? Like if I had a baby I I'm now I'm thinking about it, like if I had a child, I'm going to put that car seat like right behind me or right behind the passenger seat. I want the baby to be right there. So just in case, you know, they need a bottle or a pacifier, I can just turn around and reach and just give it to them. So what was the position of the car seat at? That's what I want to know. Or how many was the other? I know you was dropping the kids off at daycare, you know, but it's the eighth month old probably was the youngest one. So it'll be the closest one, even though the other ones probably ain't car seat too. But you know what I'm saying? And then the baby must have been knocked out for you to forget that child and then to give the car to the grandmother and then for her not to notice that the child is in the car. Like when I get into the car, I always notice my surroundings. I look for real every time I get in the car. You know, and I mean, she ain't check her rearview mirror to bag back what she just had to drive forward or whatever. You, when you got out the car, you ain't looking in the back. Like, it's so many. I just don't understand. Now that I'm thinking about it. And then, you know, come outside and the baby is dead in the car. Because 9 out of 10, it's still warm outside. You know, it's still summer-like outside. Even though it's fall now, it's still summer-like outside. The weather, and you have to probably, most likely have the windows up. And the baby is now dead. Like, I just have questions. 
It's just all sad. I ain't had these questions when I read it, but now that I'm thinking about it, something just ain't right. It ain't adding up. It really ain't adding up. And I know people do be forgetting their kids, but still, something is not right with this. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. That is so fucking sad. Um, Amber Rose is in her feelings because, you know, she doing the slut walk and... I understand where it originates at and, you know, originated in Toronto, Canada, whatever. And they've been doing it other places too. Basically, you know, f for female empowerment. So females won't have to feel bad about their appearances. Basically saying that their appearance is what makes men want to rape them or sexually assault them and all this stuff. She's upset at the fact that, you know, the lack of female support in the entertainment industry, you know, she's like, if these she's reaching out to people and these females want thirty to forty thousand dollars in order to come and perform. I mean I understand where she's coming from. She doing this for a good cause, but what you expect? What you expect, Amber? You thought they was just gonna be like, okay, cool. I mean Nicki Minaj donated to her. She donated like five thousand dollars to her. So hey, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And girl, let me end this shit because I'm tired. I'm hungry as hell. I ain't ate all goddamn day. Sit here snacking on some goddamn candy corn. My teeth gonna be fucked up even more. Okay. But candy corn is the devil because it's so good. Fuck what you heard. Fuck what you heard because somebody just said, bitch, you crazy. No, you are. Okay. It is life. Okay. Mm. But anyway, moving on. K. Michelle. K. Michelle just gave us a case of dick to bomb okay and she going through it and i really need her to get her life together okay girl you doing your third album i'm actually kind of looking forward to listening to it because i actually i cannot believe how much i liked the second album i really did like her anybody want to buy a heart i love that album like that was a good album and yeah you did your little interview runs and promotion for it, talking about some you know I fuck with Idris Elba, and he treated me like a damn side chick, you know. He had another bitch pregnant and all this stuff. So, that's, you know, he broke my heart, and it's what most of the songs was about on the album. So, this album was basically about him. Now, you come about, coming out talking about something, that this third album, you still going to be talking about him on it. Girl, I don't want to hear no more about him, okay? What other nigga you was fucking with, okay? Let's hear about him, okay? Not Idris. We get it. We get it. You is scorn. That dick must have been bomb as fuck because i just don't understand like you can two albums two albums girl two albums let that shit go girl let that shit go okay let that shit go you can't be better and hurt all your life all right you gotta move on that's how you get better okay move on to bigger and better that probably was bigger and better that probably was your ceiling bitch let me stop playing K, K Michelle, you got to stop playing. You got to stop playing, okay? You got your reality show coming out for a season two. You know, I'm looking forward to that. Girl, and you up here harping on this dick, and he over there playing with his little baby. Girl, get out of here. Y'all saw that video, you know, um, he came out with the song or whatever. Okay, Idris, you can try. I ain't here for it, but, you know, the beat was cute. You know, made me want to dirty wine to it a little bit. But, okay. And then she posted and deleted some shit, talking about some, um, you know, Something, something, something. Fuck the baby mama. Fuck him. And you need to stick to what you use, uh, what you known for. Fuck this music career. Cause you need to uh, stick to what you good for, bitch. <laughs> I said what? And then they talk about some this alleged email that leaked or got hacked or whatever, and leaked out from her to him, basically saying that I miss you in my hot pocket. I miss your face in your in my hot pocket and all this stuff. And I was like. Move on, okay? Move on. <laughs> Girl, entertainment news, you can't take seriously. That shit just made me laugh when I thought about it. Like, really? I ain't never been too sprung on no bitch that I'll be. Mm. Child, you know what? Mm -mm. I mean, if I was to. Girl, let me shut up because <laughs> I ain't trying to put shit out there in the, in, 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 in the universe. Y'all see me on here? I ain't never been this way. This just broke my heart. 
You ain't never gonna get me on here like that. You probably get me on here. I'm pretty sure y'all can tell when a bitch be going through some stuff. But she ain't never gonna get me on here. <laughs> I do it off camera. You ain't gonna never get me on here breaking down like this bitch just to fuck my brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll never, you'll never, you'll never. Let me stop playing. Y'all like, bitch, cut this camera off. I know her, but y'all have fun. Um, Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this video. I hope y'all have a good weekend. You know, enjoy it while this weather lasts, while it's cool, while it's good before we get cold. Child, I can't wait till it get cold. I can't wait for jacket weather. That is that is my weather. Like, I don't give a fuck. Y'all, some people don't like the cold. I love the cold. Just don't give me no snow, and I can deal with it. Like, I can stand outside in some 20 below weather. Girl, it's all right with me. And still be just having a jacket on. I wear jackets throughout the winter. You know, let me tell you why. Because I like comfort, uh, com to be comfortable. And I like to move around, okay? I don't like to feel stuffed, and I don't like to feel bloated. And I'm a big person already. And sometimes when you put on winter coats and shit, and, and you a big person, you put on a goddamn winter coat, it just makes you look all two times bigger than what you really is, and you just sitting there looking all stuffed and fucked. No, give me a goddamn jacket and a third one. I'm good. I'm good, okay? I don't be going nowhere. But, oh, uh, yeah. Just put that out there. I tell y'all, let me get the fuck off of here. Y'all like, girl, click off. I am. I am. I will see y'all later. Peace. I almost called y'all bitches. Child, let me stop. Y'all like, and so now you using us? Now we bitches? Now we bitches? No, no. It's a term of endearment in my mind. In this instance. Y'all know. Y'all know. I'll see y'all later. Let me stop.